our school. Well, let me go back and bring the school history up. The first, school, of course, they had these, uh, every country church had a schoolhouse right by the side of it. And the trustees, when this county was formed, which included Saluda then, when this county was formed, they divided it up in the school districts, the whole county, and appointed a trustees over each district. It was up to the trustees to get the schoolhouse built, to hire the teacher, and to get people to su subscribe enough money to pay the teacher, which ranged from 20 to $30 a month, a three-month school normally. And uh, that's what they had in the area, Mountain Page and others. Mountain Page had a three-room school. It was one of the best. But the uh, Congregational Church with headquarters in Boston, after the Civil War, there were no schools in the South. The Congregational Church out of Boston came to Saluda and established a high school. It was rather famous in its day. It was called the Saluda Seminary. Now the seminary today is normally where ministers are trained. A seminary simply means a school. Semen, seed. You plant seed and it develops. So a school is where they planted seed. So the Saluda Seminary was quite a, a school, a good school, a top school. Some of the most famous people that Lola Ward and people of her vintage could tell you about was the teachers who were at that school. They came from other places to teach school. My older brother and sister started school at the Saluda Seminary. They uh, continued to do that. The girls' dormitory is still standing. It's called something else now. The boys had the board out in town. Most of them stayed with Moses Pace in the Pace's boarding house where Autumn Care is today. So that's where the boys stayed and the girls in the dormitory. But some marriages happened. Girls came there from Tennessee and other places uh, and uh, met boys locally and they married in Saluda. But it was a, the stores were primarily James Leander Hart, better known as Daddy Hart, a famous man. He helped build the railroad as a young man. He stayed there and at one time he was either postmaster or policeman or a storekeeper or undertaker. Just depended on what you needed, he, he supplied it. But I would say that over the long tenure, uh, Daddy Hart or J.L. Hart, James Leander, incidentally his mother was a pace, uh, is the one the main anchor of that town. George Lafayette Thompson purchased later the store that you all know today as Thompson Ward. That store was started by a man by the name of Morrison or Morris and Sonner. And Mr. Sonner was there, I remember him well, for many years. Um, Leighton Capps bought it then. And finally he took uh, the man they called Fate Thompson, his name was George Lafayette, in partnerships and eventually he owned it. <coughs> the other store was <coughs> the Mac Pace store and that stayed in the family until Robert Hugh died. Stayed in the Pace family that long. Now his daughter's not named Pace anymore. But uh, those two stores 
Along the way, there were others. One of the most notable men was Isaac Means, a black man who was the only barber in town for many years. He wore a Prince Albert coat and a wing-tip collar all the time with a big tie. I mean, he dressed up when he came to town. And uh, <coughs> his uh, barber shop and the post office was down there where the bank is today in that area. Uh, there were other places, but most of the time people were going in and out, run a store a while or like a feed store or a restaurant or something. Dr. Little came to town, a pharmacist. He built a drugstore and a theater. The theater is about where the insurance place is now. They're about where the Saluda Grade is in that area. Mr. Sonner built another building, a brick building by the side of Thompson and Ward building. The post office was downstairs and Dr. Sally's office was upstairs in that. There was a man by the name of Salibi that ran a, a restaurant there in town. A man by the name of Ramsey had a feed and seek siege store where the city hall is now. Others went in and out. Thompson and Pace were the lasting ones. Your dad was a mail carrier. Tell us about the extent of that route. <laughs> Too far. Yes. He kept three horses. He just used one one day and rotated. So he used it two days a week. That mill route left the post office, went out by Mountain Page Church, went down, went up Trammel Gaps Road, over Fuller Mountain, down into Greenville County, down the Saluda River, to the Saluda River, down the Saluda River, to Marysville, and then came up 25 to the foot of the mountain, then backtracked and came up the Saluda Road, past Mountain Page, from there, it went over Paces Mountain, came down to Macedonia, and back to Saluda. Now, that was a long way for a horse. They got up a petition and formed the second mail route. And the post office in those days tried to economize, so they said to my daddy, you'll have to take that one too. So again, he went by Mountain Page Church, went down, went over uh, the mountain there, Mine Mountain to F Fork Creek, down Fork Creek to Melrose, down 176 to Packlet Bridge, from Packlet Bridge over to Howard's Gap, up Howard's Gap, back Louisiana Avenue in the town. They had to get a, he had to get a car then. He went from a buggy, well first he rode a horse, then he had a two-wheel cart for a long time. <coughs> the horse ran away with him in Sanders Orchard over at Macedonia and tore his two-wheel cart apart. <coughs> he planted mail all over the orchard. And later he had a buggy. But then when they put that other route on him, he had to go to an automobile. And some days he'd leave home before daylight and not get back home till nine o'clock at night. No paved roads, no paved roads. Mud, mud axle deep on the cars. 